subcontractors fail to show. Misunderstandings and conflicts between the remaining crew causes more problems. Les, this is Alan. We need to talk to you immediately. Because <laughs> he kept telling me to come in and work. And you know, Les, really, I need you down here. We got a build going on. I got a family moving back in five days. I can never reach you. And he's screaming at me. Uh, I've been here four times before, and I couldn't do any work because you know, I, was too, I was here way too early. You're f***ing holding this entire f***ing project off! So I just got, my patience ran out also, so I didn't even show up this weekend because as it is, I knew they weren't going to be ready. When you have a project that you're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars and there's 50 guys, if you have 50 guys standing around for one minute, you just lost a man hour. So you can't afford to have people standing around waiting to get things done. You really need to make sure everybody does what they said they were going to do when they said they were going to do it. You know, I can sit out here and I can peek in the windows, but it doesn't show enough. The crew reevaluates their commitment, the tight deadlines, and each other. I'm going to start as soon as the money's clear. What you're asking here is that we're paying you for your actual labor in advance. <laughs> I, I, I can just imagine what's going on back there. This is my method of guaranteeing that I will be paid in full for the amount of money that we're promised. Right, and I'm not comfortable with that. I, mean, okay. I don't play. Thank you very much for your time. Right. I appreciate Thanks. it. Thanks. It's also kind of neat to just sit here, even though I can't go in, just sit here and listen to the construction noises. Hammers and saws and power things. That's, that's very cool. Well, it all sounded good. Pull together an all-star group of Northern California builders, suppliers, and subcontractors. Give ourselves two weeks to completely renovate a 1970-era Danville track home. The insulate subfloor and inspect is red. Red, 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 red. Can we finish our project on time? Will the rain stop coming down? My name is Alan Tatomer, the host of Rapid Remodel TV, and welcome to Rapid Remodel TV Danville. Forget the big budgets. We are the real reality home makeover show. We're the actual builders of the stars. Have a good time. This is our story. We're going into the final phase of the project. One more week of details. Enough details to drive myself and everybody here crazy. We need to hang all the moldings, lay carpet, lay hardwood, lay floor tile, grout the existing tile, lay the backsplash tile, finish the master bath tile, and insert our radiant new heat flooring before it's actually done. Did I say paint? 2,200 square foot of paint. Install the skylights over the patio cover install all the doors and if that isn't enough we have to finish the exterior stucco coat on the outside of the house the family moves back in a week from today we're moving furniture in the day before no big deal six weeks for most contractors one week for rapid remodel tv this is not a place for pessimists the specialty finish crews hit their stride Brian Moylan returns to finish the new mailbox monument and walkway. While in the garage, Art from A&J Doors installs new clope articulating doors. And Fred at Payless Closets delivers and installs the new garage cabinetry. These are garage cabinets, Payless closets. They'll be adjustable shelves. Two in the top, two in the bottom, and a big shelf in the middle. They're 32 inches wide. They're nice, heavy-duty garage cabinet. Nice. Uh, my name's Danny, and I'm out here to 
work on this fence. Uh, Brian and I are gonna, gonna take care of this. This is the third project for me working with Alan and uh, Brian's second project. You might want to go with uh, the type where you can open it and then the, the door will actually lift off the hinges. It's a lag and it's, yeah. it's like an L. When you open it, it'll lift off and lift completely out of your way. Because of an issue of prepayment, we were out a metal banister for our stairway. Fortunately, Crow suggested a wooden replacement. Hey, finally made it back. We got some extra projects that they already threw at us, and I'm excited about that, let me tell you. Oh, hard maple. They should call it heavy maple, that's what I say. Here's my plank of wood right here. And out of this, hopefully will come something of an artistic element. I don't have much else to show you right now. So oh. come back in about a half hour. Well, what we're working on at the moment is our 14-foot continuous handrail. Code requires that from the top to the bottom, you have to have a continuous handrail. And a glued up weld, we're just about to finish uh, the sand sanding part of it and work right into staining with the stain dry and then we'll go ahead and put a polyurethane finish on the top of that. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut these long sweeping curves on this piece and this is in general what it will end up looking like then we'll just finish sand all this and then get our finish applied to it. If I ever get finished with this it's going to be but I don't think it's going to be on thing. I really hope it does, though. And then the pig said to the farmer that he didn't want What we're doing right now is we're putting on a stain to match the tread work that will be installed a little bit later this week. You know, we're getting to the point where we're in the finish work, and I like that word. As a friend tells me, done is beautiful. Sometimes obstacles lead to creative solutions. Crow's wood railing turned out to be a work of art. All right, here comes the last cut. This is day 392 and counting. Let's see what trouble we can get into. This is supposed to be cut on a radius, and we have square edges. I don't know how they templated that. This is the sub base for the countertop. It was supposed to get round, uh, a big sweep around out to here and round back in to give it a graceful lines, and somehow it ended up with just corners on it. So I'll be interested to hear the story behind that. Well, I just walked past this open window. It's like, you know, this is really coming together. Okay, so I'm gonna put that All in. right, so what's the option? I mean, Mary Lee, our designer, is going to be here tomorrow. I mean, we can come up with some sort of solution there or... Just make a simple top, put a simple top here. Yeah, maybe Les and I discuss the finer well, points of supporting the countertop okay, it's all open. before Ali arrives yeah, to template. the uh, <laughs> makeup table. I like it. It's makeup. Yeah, that's what you and I need to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, not yet. Hi, I'm Ali Romero with Everlasting Marble and Granite, and we're here to do the template of the Master Vanity tub deck and also the uh, Master Vanity itself. We're going to actually take precise measurements um, with wooden templates that we then take back with us to our shop, lay on the stone, and cut out the stone and, and start fabricating from there. Well, first of all, I need to measure how deep this is going to be right now because of the slab. The slabs are only 60 inches at the most. Right. I think right. you can go 12. I think well, we'll you won't have any lip on these. Yeah, we will. Well, you put the lip on it. Because yeah, either way, there's going to have to. the lip gets added on to the slab. Right. And either oh, way, okay. there's going to have to be a seam because of this guy. Okay. Allie and her crew from Everlasting Marble and Granite took the templates back to her shop and fabricated the countertops. The final result is stunning. Hey, this looks wonderful. Oh, we got, this is vibrant. This is colorful. Now that the kitchen countertops are finally anchored, it's time to turn the kitchen over to Anthony, our tile setter, who prepares to install the limestone backsplashes that will run full height from the top of the counters to the bottom of the upper cabinets. If it's tight, I won't have any room to slide a panel on. 
<laughs> Neil Diamond is the bomb. Sweet Caroline. Yes. We can give my request. How about can, can, can I ever get out of here? Can you sing that song? <laughs> Doesn't get any better than this, ladies and gentlemen. Voila. I feel inclined. Ba 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 ba. Drowning walls is never so good. So good. So good. <laughs> Give me some elbow, Anthony. Since my baby left me, I got some place to dwell in the lonely, lonely streets of a heartbreak hotel. Yeah, baby. I am grouting my masterpiece. That's fine. What are you doing? And I am getting this done as fast as I can, but also at the same time, I'm going to make it as sweet as a masterpiece as it can get. After he finishes grouting the kitchen backsplash, Anthony jumps upstairs to finish the tile work in the kids' bathroom. Now allow enough room for the plumber to fit his pieces in here. Whoops. Just oh, sitting there. Right. This might break. Yeah. It's lifted. It won't break. It's concrete. It might break. It might break. <laughs> the tile guys found a hairline crack in the kids' bathroom concrete countertop. We needed damage control to assess whether or not this was a problem or a design oh, enhancement. Maybe there was some, some stuff on here that was making it crack. Oh, it could just be from the head of a screw or something. I would get um, some glue for the countertop and you mix it together and you apply it here. I wouldn't do that. No? I would, I would, because then you're creating an uneven surface. I would take my glue that I've got with the trowel, yeah. with a little notch, and make it one even flat whole surface. We put a little mastic underneath the uh, the concrete countertop to level it out. And uh, if the crack gets any worse, we'll call out the uh, fabricators who did it and they can colorize it. Last cut. So this is pretty cool. So uh, anyway, it's the last cut for the wonder board and uh, we'll get it taped off and nailed off and get the tile laid out. So. Yeah. After we get this all nailed and taped up, we'll uh, put uh, a new new heat uh, heating system pad in, which so if you're barefoot in the morning and you're in front of the, the sink there with your coffee, your feet are nice and warm. So uh, it's a nice little luxury item. I'm trying to design something cool for this, this space here, so um, I'm just playing around with it now, see what's going to look really, really nice. I'm Rachel with Fireplace Products, and we're out installing, uh, finishing up the installation on the two Regency uh, units that we have here. We have a P33 up in the master bedroom and a U35 gas insert in the living room, family room downstairs. And we're going to be putting on louvers today and making sure that they're burning properly and getting them all cleaned up and finished out for the homeowner. Because uh, once there's gas applied, you know, I can tie on the ball cock and everything like that. If you want to tie on the ball cock right now and then you're just going to send gas through, that should be just okay. I'm check, checking out the gas bin right now for pressure. And, uh, Hope it's okay for the gas test for the, for the inspector. This is Raf Kent for Rapid Rental TV. Breaking news. So it's looking beautiful. The house is going to be great. I can't wait to see it when it's all finished. Now we uh, yesterday we came in. We white coated the living room, the stairwell, and pretty much anything else we could get that was ready. Rest of the day we're going to be white coating the rest of the inside here, and hopefully we get close to done. Right there. Well, I am Dan Silva. I am the owner of Dublin Central Vacuums. We're looking to uh, install a central vacuum system. Well, this is a VacuFlow 566Q. It's what we like to call our premier line. It's our premier unit. It is one of the quietest on the market. My name is Tom Atkins, and I work for All Seasons Insulation. We are here to blow uh, insulation in the attic, uh, cellulose insulation, and we're going to bring up uh, the attic to an R38 level which will be about 10 inches of insulation everywhere. It's getting a little warm up there. We're going to get started and hopefully be at her before we sweat through our clothes. So. It's, it's been, a, it's been a, a rough two weeks. And to top it off, you know, Saturday was the busiest of all days. We actually were able to frame up the addition, which is literally nine or ten days after we had hoped yesterday Sunday our day off it rained and it rained hard so the whole backyard is another mud pit 
and it's going to make landscaping and everything just just slow down. But today is probably going to be the single busiest day. We have literally got to do about 27 line items or the work. We're putting on the shingles uh, over the roofing here. We just had the inspection finished and it uh, passed. And we're going to be putting three skylights. So we're framing for those. And uh, the uh, shingles we're using actually comes in a roll and it has a self, uh, self sticking uh, mechanism on it so that as you roll it, it sticks to the, fall to the next one and then it uh, creates a very good seal. Well, this is a waterproof membrane that's going down on the deck. This is a product that is the waterproofing product and it's also the surface that you walk on and it also looks nice. So it's kind of one product that does three things because this piece is over living space down, down below, but it's also a walking deck. So we're just doing the uh, final prep on the deck. We've used a cement-based patching compound to go over all the imperfections on the floor, and we're just doing some final touch-up on it before we actually start laying down the Duradeck product. It's a vinyl sheet good, goes down with contact cement. All the seams get heat welded and fused together, uh, which you can see in a little bit when we get going on that. When water comes to the outside of the wall, it's on the outside of the membrane and it flows down. Paper comes down over it and they stucco down over it, so what we're doing is we put a little piece of trim material in here to just lock in the back edge. We're going to put that in so they can put on the wire and the lathe and do the stucco, so basically this isn't holding up the stucco work. Right there. Frank Mantel with uh, La Pergola from Oak Park, Michigan. For those looking for a traditional wooden pergola without the expense of fabricating on site or using one of the many stamped metal look-alikes, the La Pergola kit is the best answer. After concrete footings are poured, hollow resin columns are positioned and anchored into place with full height all-thread rods. Pre-cut beams and purlins are then screwed into place by Mike, our finish carpenter using our multifunctional little giant ladder and scaffold system. Three hours later, the results speak for themselves. It's a well-engineered kit, well-designed, uh, simple to install. Takagi in the house. All right, this is Victor from Takagi. Takagi was very nice to join our team here. Victor returns to deliver the dual tank Takagi on-demand water heaters. These European style tankless heaters require less space and up to 40 percent less energy. We've got a little problem with our hot water. Not enough water for the uh, Kohler shower tower. So uh, we need over 12 gallons a minute. So Victor's here and he's going to explain to us what we need to do. Basically you want to, what you want to do is size it appropriately using real ground, incoming groundwater temperature real groundwater pressure, and what the homeowner's um, realistic expectations are for, for water consumption. How many gallons of water do they need to flow per minute? We're looking at a, at least a 30% minimum saving on the gas that you use for heating water. Uh, a lot of my actual technical service calls I find most people are reporting somewhere actually between 40 and 50%. Here we are working in the garage. A uh, couple of little last minute issues here. One was, I noticed there's one wire coming in and two wires coming out. So when I started doing some investigation, wow, look what I found. Illegal is all get out. And uh, this is not good. This is a major fire hazard. So now, some more work. Today we were, uh, we're putting on the, the brown coat, which uh, makes the wall flat. And then we texture it to match the existing. So it's a finished product after it gets painted. The cement is not a waterproof barrier. The cement is, is porous and has sand in it, so all it's going to do is suck the water up. What makes a building tight is your paper. That's what makes a building watertight. This just actually protects the paper. I just wanted to know if you were quitting or not. I, when, I, when I heard that, I thought, what the hell's going on? You're not stepping down, are you? You're, you're not quitting. I mean, I, I don't know what the hell's going on. Well, today's the day the homeowners are moving in. And we're looking good. And I can, I can see an end to this road. With five days to go, the stress mounts. The crew steps up the pace to finish the project and reflects on their experiences 
of a rapid remodel trial by fire. Wow. You couldn't you couldn't write a script for this job site. The the best thing I I mean it was a life experience. I mean this is a one in a one it's in a lifetime deal. I, I completed my masterpiece in the kitchen. That's a final. Thanks to everybody for all the hard work and the quality work and, and effort. It's been a long grind and I myself haven't been having very much fun to tell you the truth. Taking on a challenge. I mean that that's that's cool. I like challenges. Everyone's straight out of central casting here. But they're not actors, they actually do the work and they do it well. And I, I gotta say I had the, the funnest time with everybody here. Um, the crew was just absolutely wonderful. I think the best thing about this project has been working with everybody. The exceptional crew. With, without a great bunch of guys, this would have been this would have been too hard to face in every morning. Even on a great job, you run into your bumps and problems and you just have to you have to work them out. Just smooth them over. Preferably with some Italian plaster. You bet, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Grab it like it's stolen. Later. Oh, oh, oh I got my beer goggles on. If it ain't one thing, it's five others, right? So you getting this on camera? Yeah. No. Right enough. <laughs> now this was the other show, and if I was one of the other hosts with <laughs> spiky hair, <laughs> we cut. And put me in a t-shirt and make me look like I did everything all by myself. That's how they do You have to cry too. You have oh to cry. yeah. You have to cry. Is yeah, that right. what they do? You can't be on the whole show unless you cry. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got a beautiful wall. <laughs>